Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today I want to talk about thyroid symptoms in men and the connection between thyroid hormone and low testosterone and why it's different than um, hypothyroidism in women. So I talk about some of, the, some of the similarities and differences in this post, but I want to focus primarily on men. And so what we have is a combination of two things. So men tend to get the symptoms of low testosterone if they have hypothyroidism. So they have sort of two sets of symptoms. They tend to ha get all of the symptoms associated with hypothyroidism, and then they also tend to get all or many of the symptoms associated with low testosterone as well. And so I'm going to go over some of these with you. So men with hypothyroidism commonly present with any or um, all of the following symptoms. So um, increase in fatigue or decrease in energy levels, of course, decrease in libido and sex drive, and then other changes in sexual fun fun functioning or function, including erectile dysfunction. And this is where things start to differentiate. So remember, testosterone is really important for sexual function in men, more so than it is in women. Even though it is important in women, men tend to be hit harder um, in that way than women do. Another symptom would be the inability to build muscle mass or simply decrease muscle strength. So if you see a reduction in the tone of your muscle mass or the inability to build muscle mass as a man, especially if you're less than 50, or younger than 50, I should say, uh, that's a problem. That, that's a sign that something is, is off. Um, unexplained weight gain or the inability to lose weight despite using therapies that have worked in the past. So that's another big one. Um, generally for men, it's very easy to lose weight. If you are having an issue in losing weight, and again, you're younger than 50, that is not a, a normal um, issue to be facing for a, for a man. For a woman, it's a different story. They, it's harder for them to, to lose weight, but a man should be able to drop 20 pounds in a, in a month or two months, no problem. And then, of course, changes in mood ranging from feeling down to depression. And so this sort of is, this one's a little more difficult and a little more broad, um, obviously, because depression can be associated with a lot of different um, conditions. But if you're just not feeling like you like yourself, usually men, you know, they, they kind of know if they're feeling like themselves or not. And so all of these tend to be associated with the low testosterone that hypothyroidism causes in men. But in addition to all these, then they just get the, the more general hypothyroid symptoms as well. So they have, you know, several of these up here, plus these down here, which are the, the symptoms of hypothyroidism. And those include constipation or changes in bowel movements, anything leaning towards constipation um, or trending in that direction. So, you know, if you're having a bowel movement every day and then all of a sudden it goes to every other day or every third day, that's a problem. Dry skin or changes in skin texture, um, other mood changes, including anxiety, but also depression can be included in here. Difficulty with sleep or insomnia. Um, cold temperatures or feeling like you always have to put on a sweater or something like that. Um, and then issues with fertility. That This happens in women as well, but can definitely happen in men. Um, muscle aches and pains, joint pain, things like that. And then, of course, difficulty with concentration or decreased attention span and or brain fog. So those are the more generalized symptoms of hypothyroidism. Um, and these are the more specific symptoms of low testosterone. Now, you can have low testosterone without having hypothyroidism. But what I'm trying to point out here is that hypothyroidism causes low testosterone. So you get the combination of these two um, groups of, of symptoms. And that's why that's where men really differentiate from women. So I talk about more about that connection in this post and you can look at that and you can read more about why that's a problem. Um, but for now I want to talk about testing for thyroid problems in men which is different than in women. Yes there are some similarities here but if you are a man and you are watching this and you suspect you have thyroid problems or you suspect you have low testosterone these are the tests that you're going to want to look at. So of course TSH. Now TSH should be less than 2.0. Anything higher than that is 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 um, an issue generally. I will say though that um, in men they tend to tolerate subclinical hypothyroidism better than women do. So you could be a man with a TSH of 2.5 to 3 and feel okay or just borderline. But the problem with that is you are just you know. Um, you're very close to teetering on the edge of hypothyroidism. So even though you might feel okay, it's still not a good state to be from a biochemical standpoint. So you want to get it addressed. Um, so TSH, you need to check. Free T3, you need to check, and you want that in the upper 50% of the reference range. Total T3, same thing, upper 50% of the reference range. Reverse T3 uh, should be less than 15 if you're a man. And then sex hormone binding globulin is a very important test if you're a man as well, um, because SHBG goes up and down depending on your thyroid function and SHBG can bind to your testosterone so it can limit it further from from um, working so you don't want your SHB too high um, and in this case I think somewhere between 20 and 30 is optimal for a man then of course in addition to all your thyroid tests which we've just talked about here you want to check both free and total testosterone 
Now, free testosterone, I like to be uh, generally in the top top one third or, or 30th percentile or so of the re of the reference range. And then for total testosterone, you want that to be in the six to 700 range, or at least greater than that. Um, you know, anything less than that, I generally think is a problem. Um, just to put that into perspective. And then the last thing you want to look at is your estradiol level. Um, because estradiol can compete, it doesn't directly compete with testosterone, but if you have low testosterone and high estrogen, that's going to cause um, a wide range of symptoms as well that need to be addressed. So these are the tests that you want to look at. Um, I also have an example here to show you kind of what happens. And this is a male patient which came to see me. These are his actual lab tests here, so you can look at these. And you can see sort of the the cascade of problems that occurs from hypothyroidism. And in this case, this person had, this particular man, had um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis as evidenced by this elevation in um, antibodies. But you can look here, you can see the TSH is 6.12, which is far greater than that 2.0 range that I told you. So he's above 2.0, that's a problem. Then you can see his low testosterone, which is right here, so it's 497. So if you look at the range 241 to 827, this is actually a relatively, relatively preserved testosterone in a man you might be able to feel, this guy's probably feeling okay, um, you know, at that level. Testosterone, not in, if you just ignore the thyroid, but if you just looked at the testosterone, yeah, that's not terrible, but I still like it to be in the six to 700 range because that puts you in that, that higher end of that, of that range. You obviously, even though the range technically is normal from 250 to, let's just say 820, you don't want to be 250. You want to be as close to 800 as you can possibly be. And so generally, that's why I push that a little bit higher. You can look at his low free T4, which is thyroxin um, free, and that's at 0.58. Then he's got the elevated thyroid antibodies, which I talked about, thyroglobulin and thyroid peroxidase. And then the another issue for him is his hemoglobin A1C is creeping up at 5.7, which technically puts him into the um, pre-diabetic stage, which is obviously a problem. And then the last thing right here that I want to point out is his estradiol, so 43.1 which is high. So that estradiol is going to be causing certain symptoms by itself as well, because a man does not want to have high estrogen. He wants to have a normal estrogen, but not a high estrogen, because that's a big problem. So you can see here, this is really the this is the sort of cascade of issues that occurs in a man who has thyroid related issues. And when this is the case, you want to focus primarily on the thyroid because what's going to happen is testosterone will go up, your hemoglobin A1C will drop because your insulin resistance is dropping, your cholesterol will improve, your estrogen should drop in, in the process as well, and then the thyroid lab tests will clean themselves up as you go. And so you don't want to focus on testosterone in this case. You want to look at and evaluate thyroid first, and then you can recheck the testosterone to see if that's an issue. But that's the order that you want to go things because it's known that thyroid causes low testosterone or hypothyroidism. So that's the importance there. And then of course, um, th we, there's another issue or, or topic worth discussing, and that is the use of testosterone replacement therapy or TRT in addition to thyroid hormone. And for your information, um, I'm a proponent of using both in combination with one another, even if it might be able, you might be able to fix your um, thyroid or you might be able to fix your testosterone by addressing your thyroid. And the reason is simple. As a man, you're going to get certain benefits by using TRT, and they can they, they just help you get to where you need to be into your optimal state very quickly. So this could be the difference of feeling better. If you just looked at your thyroid and treated it, you might feel you know back to normal within six months. If you use testosterone therapy, you might feel better in one to two months. So I think just using the combination of those things is, is better in my mind to use testosterone and thyroid, but it depends on you. You may be somebody that has the time and is worth and feels like waiting or doesn't want to use TRT for whatever reason, or maybe it's unavailable to you. That's fine too. It doesn't matter. But all I'm saying is my personal opinion is using those combination of, of hormones together tends to get the best results in the in the shortest amount of time possible. So that's pretty much it. These are those are the the nuances associated with thyroid um, hypothyroidism and the symptoms they cause in men. And a lot of this focuses around testosterone and how testosterone impacts men differently than it does women. Yes, there are some crossovers like you know decrease in muscle mass and depression and um, some weight gain that women also experience, but you can think about that as being 10 times more um, impactful in a man than it is in a woman. So very important to address those two things. And if you if you feel you get into this category, definitely order all these tests that I mentioned before. You have to look at all these, otherwise you're not going to get a clear picture. So that's all I have for you guys today. If you have any questions, let me know, especially if you're a man and um, you're struggling with some of these things. Leave your comments below and I'll do my best to get to those. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.